Thanks for staying with us here on Law and Crime. We shift gears now to Norfolk County, Massachusetts, where day three of jury selection concluded for defendant Karen Reed. She is accused of killing her boyfriend, Boston police officer John O'Keefe, in January of 2022. After a night of heavy drinking, prosecutors argue that Reed backed her SUV into the victim and left him to die in a snowbank outside his friend's house. On the other hand, Reed's defense team believes she's being framed in a massive cover-up orchestrated by both witnesses and law enforcement. And keep in mind, a federal investigation concluded that the victim's injuries were not consistent with having been hit by a car. Reed faces charges of second-degree murder, vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated and leaving the scene of a collision. If convicted, she faces life in prison. And as of Thursday afternoon, 12 out of 16 jurors have been selected for the panel, so jury selection will have to continue into Monday. And once a jury is seated, the trial is expected to take six to eight weeks. And this week, the jury questionnaire was released to the public, so let's see if it gives us some insight where uh, each case is a heading here. And still with us to discuss all this, criminal defense attorney Matt Panic and social worker and trauma expert Sherry Botwin. Question for both of you here. Do any of the questions in the jury form stand out to you from your own points of expertise? Matt, I'm going to start with you. No, not really. It's pretty standard what they're trying to do is what you're often not wanting to do is pre-try the case. But at the same time, you need to know if people are have any preconceived notions. Have they made any fixed opinions or biases? And reviewing the jury instruction, I mean, the, uh, the questionnaire, it definitely didn't seem anything out of the ordinary, but it definitely laid the foundation of where both sides are going to go. And for the prosecution, Karen Reed is a cop killer. For the defense, this is a cover-up. And you're definitely, if you're the defense, you're trying to find people who are open to the idea of cover-ups. And I definitely think that the uh, Wadire is definitely going into situations trying to find people who are open to the idea that this was, in fact, a cover-up. Sherry, your thoughts? I think, you know, when, when I think about the questions, what it's doing, like he's saying, the questions are pretty standard, but I think... It's interesting for people to who are answering these questions because I think for some people it could be triggering some of their own experiences if they have been in a similar situation where either they have felt like they've been framed or they know somebody else that has. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this jury. Well, Sherry, with that in mind, what could the jury questionnaire tell us about each side's case? What could it, I mean, I think it could say that it, either situation is possible and it's, they're trying to find people who can really be unbiased and hear the evidence and base a decision not on their own personal experience, but on the presentation by both sides. Now, Matt, this case has been and will continue to be very highly publicized once this trial begins. And Keep in mind, the judge ruled to put a buffer zone in place around the courthouse that's about 200 feet deep, equaling over half a football field away. And even with this in place, I mean, how difficult will it be to keep jurors away from possible interference? It's definitely going to be a situation where jurors are going to be treated like VIPs throughout this case. Uh, I think they're going to have to, it might be a situation where they may have to sequester the jury. That may be a last case scenario uh, brought in on a bus or something like that, where they'd be brought right to the base of the courtroom so that they wouldn't go near the, uh, the protesters and people on one way or another. It's going to be difficult, uh, but I definitely think that uh, they should, the party should be using today and tomorrow, if need be, to figure out exactly how you're going to protect juries, because if you don't, you're just opening the door for a mistrial after you've spent months, even years, litigating this case. Well, Sherry, I mean, does the intensity of this trial give and put more pressure on these jurors? I think it probably will, and I think it's also going to make it much more confusing for them. All this, uh, all this media attention, and also even just the way Karen is acting in front of the cameras, even though we hope that the jury is not going to be watching any of that, they will see things in the courtroom and they will know that there's people outside sort of sort of thinking or talking about both sides. We've got people supporting her 
and we've got people supporting the man who died. So I think it's hard not to bring that into the courtroom. And I think it's going to be really interesting just to see how all this plays out and how Karen handles all this attention. You know, one of the things that I find troubling is when I see her in front of the camera, she's smiling, she's friendly. And I'm thinking, okay, but your affect isn't matching. You're about to go on trial for murder. Um, why are you smiling? Your boyfriend is dead. Like it, it's just very confusing. So I don't know how much the jury will be seeing that because again, like there's only so much you can do to not have jury members see what's happening outside of the courtroom when there's so much media attention and the trial hasn't even officially started yet. And Matt, I mean, switching gears here, there was a previous argument about the admission of a third party culprit defense here. Uh, the judge ruled that the defense won't be able to bring it upon opening statements, but they will be allowed mm -hmm. to present it throughout the trial through testimony and evidence. Now, all three of the defense's possible culprits were revealed to be on the witness list for both parties. I mean, how will each side approach these witnesses? We have about 30 seconds. I definitely think the prosecution is going to limit the testimony of those individuals as much as they can, because every question you do, you open it up for a cross-examination. You know exactly where the defense is going. They're going to try to discredit these three individuals and try to make them, they were involved in this cover-up and conspiracy that ended in the death of John O'Keefe. All right. Well, this is definitely a trial that we are all going to be keeping our eyes on.